here today to talk about teaching at the university. And I would like to ask you all if any of you would attend university as a student maybe recently, or maybe you shared some experience. Could you put your hands up? Yeah, not many people, but yeah, I see some. <laughs> so I hope that um, our talk would be interesting and maybe inspiring for others. <laughs> and um, so, uh, in our talk, we want to share experience um, from the courses that each of our panelists, uh, today panelists, conducted recently. And uh, we would like to share with you experience, what went well, what would require some improvements in order to deliver things better. <laughs> And um, so um, we have today Tomas. He teaches, uh, teach, uh, taught uh, his student how to master Git. Uh, we have Sharka. Uh, she introduced student to fundamental of technical writings. Uh, we have uh, Maria. Uh, she shared her wisdom about. Uh, Sorry, uh, development, yeah, development of intuitive user interface. And uh, David uh, was teaching students about um, uh, software quality. And um, so we would like to maybe inspire you with our talk today. Uh, if you are having baggage of knowledge, <laughs> uh, to share this knowledge in an open source way, with uh, students, or if you are a student, maybe you would be uh, looking forward to interact with teachers like us. So the first question will be for uh, me. Yes, I am Alexandra. I was uh, also conducting a course to together with Sharka, and I see one more other uh, teacher uh, in the audience, Irka. <laughs> so uh, the first question for everybody. Oh, I can hear myself now. <laughs> so uh, tell us about your class and about the motivation. Thomas, would you like to start? Yeah, I can do that. So hopefully this would work. So hey, I'm Tomáš, uh, together with Irina Gulina. Hey, Irina, hope you are watching. Uh, we are teaching, uh, as Alex said, uh, mastering Git. And the reason we picked it uh, was because Git is such a core technology in, in the IT. And if you want to learn how to run, you first need to learn how to walk. And we try to teach the collaborative aspect of Git because that's what we do in our jobs every day, working all together uh, on the software and, and everything. And every time we had a new people starting, we would need to teach them Git, the basics. So we realized like, why not just go to the university and teach it uh, like right there. Yes, thank you. Um, well, uh, we were teaching a completely new course at the Masaryk University with a group of colleagues uh, about the fundamentals of technical writing. And the motivation for that was um, addressing the lack of um, uh, widely available courses on this uh, topic. Um, and we thought um, it would be beneficial uh, to bridge the gap between um, how the students are normally taught to write during the university or during their school um, studies uh, and what is required for the technical writing industry. Our course was in English uh, and was open for students with different backgrounds from a bachelor's to PhDs and we also had attendees uh, not only from uh, the Faculty of Informatics but also from the Faculty of art so okay <laughs> I taught uh, a course a development of intuitive uh, user inter uh, interfaces uh, with my colleagues uh, also the motivation was uh, pretty similar uh, because there are not many courses about uh, user experience about um, user needs in the faculty of informatics and we wanted to um, show students how important it is. Also, if you, are, um, if you are a developer, you still are not developing your apps for yourself 
in many cases, majority of cases, but for your users. And we wanted to emphasize it in, a, in our course. Yeah, so as, uh, as it was already stated, I was teaching software quality and my motivation was a little bit different. Uh, I'm a PhD student at Masaryk University in the second year. And I would like to say that I had no other option, but uh, it's only heavily recommended to help out with teaching. And my supervisor is actually the guardian of this class and she needed help with, hi Bara, she needed help with uh, this course in the last two years. Uh, we were teaching students how to do testing, how to write good code, manage code, so also a little bit overlap with Tomasz's things, uh, continuous integration, Maya helped us with some UX design as well, so we try to explain students how to write good stuff, good code. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, I know that we all had some challenges during the conducting the course or maybe preparation. So would you like to share those challenges? Yeah, so not this year, but last year, uh, we had 20 students applying to our seminar group and more than half of them, I think like 14 or 13, were already Red Hatters, either part-time so, uh, juniors or interns. And we were struggling a little bit with Jakub, our former uh, teacher, that what should we teach them? They already know all the things, or we're supposed to. Uh, and it was a little bit challenging to make it interesting for them, but on the other hand, they were really useful in a way that they could explain things already to the other students. So we created mixed groups of one or two Red Hatters with other students and they were actually helping us teach the rest of the people. So, of course, we encountered a lot of smaller or bigger challenges during our uh, time. But what I wanted to mention today is that uh, teachers are people too. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, there is also like challenge uh, for us, maybe some, maybe more for first time teachers to, to get in front of people, to not be super stressed out, to be able to speak and actually perform that uh, lesson. So my, uh, one of my challenges was uh, nervousness and some small anxieties, which can be, of course, uh, which can be, of, of course, uh, like um, done by uh, some, if I have better preparation, and I will have in next semester, <laughs> there is a, a lot of, um, there is less more stress, I think. Um, we also had uh, several challenges, but I would like to pick uh, one specific um, because uh, as we decided to teach uh, the fundamentals of technical writing as an open source uh, course, in an open source way, it uh, does not mean only using the open source tools, um, but it also means collaborating uh, with a bigger group of people to get the best result possible. Uh, so we had a bunch of people preparing uh, the syllabus, uh, the slides, and the lectures, and also being uh, at the venue. Uh, so managing uh, these um, multiple uh, teachers uh, in a classroom and also in a hybrid environment because we had uh, some uh, teachers also joining online. And we also had one uh, fully uh, online lesson. Um, this was kind of challenging uh, in the aspects of uh, um, time management and keeping the flow over the lectures and over the course. But I think that we succeed in this, even though there are some improvements and we will address them in the future. Very nice. Uh, okay, our challenge, I would say it was kind of typical as everyone facing, uh, because uh, so we had capacity 20 people and we got like 60 people who wanted to join. So we tried to make a homogeneous group so that they would be on the same level. Uh, we failed obviously. And uh, so that forced us to change the course basically on, on the fly. So one hour before the lecture, I would be updating slides or something like that. And I think that worked out pretty well, especially when we started every lecture with a question, no, with a set of questions 
uh, from the previous ones so that we would be sure that they still are following and, and learned from the previous parts. And that worked really well, but at the same time, I mean, we were correcting homeworks in the night and in the morning, five minutes before the lecture, talking to Irina, like what we want to actually do today. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. That was that were interesting challenges actually, and um, so I know that um, in the university sometimes uh, people are giving a lot of things to students uh, which are not actually then usable <laughs> uh, in the life in life in the career. So. Uh, what do you think uh, how we can bridge this gap in between uh, academic knowledge and the real IT world? Um, could you answer? Yeah, thank you. Um, in my opinion, um, I would like to stress uh, teaching the real skills uh, that are oftentimes called as uh, the soft skills. Uh, what I mean by that is collaboration, uh, communication, feedback giving and receiving it, uh, time management, because your overall success in your career depends on so much more than just the student's uh, uh, expert level of knowledge. Um, you also have to have all this package of skills that are needed to, and we as a teachers, we can implement it into our lectures too, uh, as we try to do it in the fundamentals of technical writing. Um, and I would uh, like to mention also uh, having uh, real-life scenarios, simulating them uh, for the students, uh, showing them a typical workflow so they have a better overview of what's been done and how, and they can also uh, bring their inputs on improvements. Um, and uh, I think that working towards something that is really applicable uh, that has an impact is uh, also a very important thing because imagine all the time and energy that both uh, the students and the teachers put in the lectures. Uh, wouldn't it be great if this uh, time and energy didn't go to waste, but it could be really used for something practical? And I also think that uh, the university should focus on specialized workshop and lifelong learning. Thank you. Uh, Sharka, yeah, that's a very good point, especially with the soft skills, because we have these courses in our companies, but this is not being taught in universities, which is, I would say, really odd. Uh, and I mean, I would really appreciate something like that when I was studying. But I would like to add on top of that, like doing events like this, for example, DEFCON, that it, it's free, it's on the university, so students can come here and learn basics of some technologies and, and reach out to people. and. Also what we were doing, like teaching at the university, I know that one of the feedback we got was uh, when we tried to say what we are doing in our day-to-day -day job, like how we are using it and, and how we are solving these complex things, like students really love that and say that that really helped them to understand why they are learning this technology or how it's being used in our jobs. Yeah, great, thank you. Uh, we will come back to feedback slightly later, but uh, first I want to ask uh, Sharka Maria, uh, what uh, learning experience uh, did students got from the course? Maria, would you like So, our course, um, so as Sharka said, uh, we gave them uh, an opportunity to at the end of our course to have like real life project and they and we somehow guided them from the very beginning from the idea through the entire designing process where they were gathering feedback uh, they were gathering like information about their users that were uh, that they were uh, creating this app for uh, till the uh, implementation itself so we guided them through the entire process and in the end they had this project that they can showcase uh, like in their portfolio and it helped them really stay focused uh, during the entire course. 
Um, in our course, um, uh, the students uh, gain some uh, basic knowledge uh, uh, and expertise in technical writing, which might be beneficial for them uh, if they want to choose this career path or even if they do not want to, they want to become uh, developers because uh, it might be also uh, they work to you know, write documentation. But as an enhancement that I would see, especially in our course, was uh, the part that uh, our students uh, were able to create their first small portfolio uh, with which they could apply for their first job or that they could reference as developers uh, to have a look how a proper documentation should be written. And I also think that um, we gave them a very detailed feedback because all of the reviewers put a lot of effort in uh, giving uh, exact, specific feedback, a lot of suggestions so they can improve. And I especially liked the last part of our course, which was delivering the last assignment uh, uh, through Git and GitHub. And the students normally, or if I, uh, when I was a student, um, I used to know that I have this only one chance to be successful to de deliver some paper, some work, and uh, we made it a uh, more agile way, uh, as we are used to when we are working uh, at Red Hat or uh, any other companies. Uh, when the students submitted their pull request, uh, reviewers took a look at this. Uh, they uh, gave them some feedback, pushed it back to the students so they can implement it. And this cycle could go on and on until the students actually reach the level we wanted uh, from them. So it was like, oh, your work sucks, NF, goodbye. It was like, oh, yeah, it would be better to implement this and this. And uh, I think that's the good point. Yeah, that actually was like that. And getting back to feedbacks, if you are a student, please fill in this form and uh, we also received a feedback from student uh, and um, what was actual the feedback from the students so thankfully uh, overall feedback for uh, our course was uh, very positive they actually enjoyed that um, uh, our lessons were interactive but of course, everything can be like more interactive always. So that was something that they enjoyed and they learned a lot uh, during uh, those activities. Uh, what's more, uh, also that our course was uh, project-based. So they actually had thing at the end that they can showcase. That was also a really great thing for them. And uh, some of them also mentioned that us giving them feedback and actually uh, leading them uh, or guiding them through the entire process, not just, okay, this is, this is bad, just do something else, or maybe next uh, homework will be better, but giving them detailed feedback uh, the way Sharka said, that helped them a lot and kind of open their eyes in some ways because uh, these people were software engineers that they, they weren't designers they did before that they didn't really think about users about the usability of their apps and uh, during for example user testing they realized okay uh, like uh, my lecturer said like it's not good because of that and that but when their peers uh, tested their app, they realized, okay, that makes sense. And yeah, sorry, I'm like, <laughs> go ahead. Um, yeah, we also conducted uh, a survey um, for our students to ask uh, how the lessons were. And after finishing the course, uh, we invited them to an informal session to get even more feedback. And we were happy that uh, it was overall uh, positive, that the course was engaging and inspiring. But what was the important part of the feedback for us is that uh, almost 90% uh, of the students uh, want to uh, be more involved uh, during the lectures to have more activity, which means for us uh, for the next run to cut on uh, the um, content, and cut down the content and uh, extend uh, more meaningful exercises. 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, I know we received more feedback, but uh, we don't have much time left, so I will continue with the questions, sorry. <laughs> uh, so what was the actual lesson learned and um, what would we do better next time? Yeah, so in my opinion, what we learned is to be more interesting for the students and it or again, it uh, goes relies back to the feedback part to read your feedback and learn from it. And the other thing is uh, regarding technology that you shouldn't give your students uh, assignments that can be solved by ChatGPT. <laughs> Throwing uh, te technical writers more under the bus right now. Sorry for that. So we need to try these things out if our lessons are solvable by ChatGPT or other AI services and try to make it more interactive and interesting for the students. Well, actually, ChatGPT was not the issue in our course because it was not able to solve our uh, homework assignments. But we uh, learned a lot about uh, giving uh, the homework assignments. As a group of reviewers, um, every week we had to review uh, almost uh, 18 ass assignments, which was a huge work to do. Um, and we know that for the next time we have to be more specific on uh, what the reviewers should focus on, because as technical writers, we are used to fo be focused on detail when conducting peer reviews. So um, for us, it's normal, but for the students, it's the first time writing something like that, uh, technical documentation. So we have to probably lower our expectations or um, adjust more to the students' needs, maybe uh, prepare them with a set of small exercises throughout the lecture so that, our, uh, that they are able afterwards to uh, make the homework assignment. And also we have to, and I think we succeed in this, um, uh, to grant a fair grading um, within uh, various uh, reviewers and also throughout the, the course, but I think this was not the issue. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, and... Um Getting back to bridging the gap <laughs> between knowledge uh, and uh, IT, real IT world, what skills teachers should um, focus on to give the students, to teach students? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we were programming, so I'm going to talk about the programming part. I'm not sure about the technical writing. Uh, regarding languages, I guess it's English. But in our case, uh, I think universities are trying to uh, focus on more like teaching the language than the logic behind it. And I think it is a bad thing. Uh, the, the way we are hiring people at Red Hat interns, uh, going through intern reviews, intern reviews, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's getting more focused on one language, one specific technology. And I feel like we are teaching students to work with one technology instead of uh, understand, having a broad perspective and trying to work with multiple technologies, trying to find the right tools for the right context. Um, yeah. um, well, I will repeat myself, but uh, I would definitely stick to giving and getting feedback because it's a very valuable skill. And also maybe that the students are not that fixed on uh, the outcome, more like on the way to getting there. I would add also implement that feedback. <laughs> so, and uh, the next question, how, well, we were talking about the, how we taught how we but we did not touch how we get involved so it, how can other IT experts can be involved in teaching I know Thomas would like to answer okay IT experts involved in teaching so yeah participate in conferences and uh, and then maybe when you realize that you know something that other people should know or other people are coming to you and want to learn about it maybe think about approaching universities and start teaching there. And and you can really just start small, like if you are working on some open source software, a service or library tool, make sure that your readme is very good, you have contributing MD so that even beginners can come there and, and try to contribute and use your software. And what really also works for us in our project is 
uh, make sure that we have chat uh, so that anyone can ask questions, can create issues saying, I don't understand this, please explain. And if you can even set up video calls with these people and, and, and start there and maybe approach the next part, like speaking at conferences and then teaching at universities. Just a quick thing. So right now, I'm look. If you are a UX designer or a UX researcher, I'm looking for a person to teach UX part of my course for next semester. So, uh, how to get involved? Come to me and uh, tell me you want to teach. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, and um, we don't have much time. And the last question um, would be actually about how. Um, what is the future of the curriculum design at the university? I know t uh, David has a lot to say. Yeah, so I already mentioned the language agnostic thing, so I would add that here as well. Also, we need to teach students how to learn continuously and never stop learning, because I think there are multiple IT experts in the room. Imagine that you would stop learning today. How, how long could you stay in your current job without losing it? Uh, also, so continuous learning, that's the second one, and maybe the third one is uh, soft skills, as Sharka mentioned already. We need them a lot, even me. That's kind of what we have for you today. I hope you got inspired. Maybe you have some questions? Yes? Was there any student that inspired like, you if you were presenting something and wanted to practice some result and he came with a better solution than even you expected? So, do I understand correctly? You are asking if the if we are trying to inspire students. Ah, if the student inspire us. Uh -huh. Who want to answer? Sharka. <laughs> yeah, we actually had this um, because uh, for our, our assignments we had, uh, for example, some um, idea how it could look like, but uh, one or two people delivered um, a solution that was like, wow, that's even better, I would implement it right away. So it was a big surprise for us, um, but uh, I actually think those people uh, were able at the end of the course to apply for a job. So I think we both, uh, the teachers and the students, did a great job because uh, after this uh, half semester course, they got some fundamentals and they were able to expand them. Thank you. Um, any more questions? Yes, please. Yeah. So uh, the question basically is uh, if the uh, AI influence in a negative way for computer science future, right? <laughs> yeah, AI will not take away your jobs in my belief. So if uh, you have a hammer that you use for coding right now, you're going to have a jackhammer for the same, same job in the future. You still need that person who operates that jackhammer and you cannot really... Uh, you don't have the robot, I mean, you might have the robot in the future, but uh, it's a tool that helps us, and if you ever tried it for coding, I'm not sure if anybody tried coding with AI. Any hands? No? Okay. How easy was to debug the code if it was bad? <coughs> was it easier than a person's or not? Because in my opinion, it was much, much harder because you can talk to the person and the person actually sometimes gives you viable answers. You can have a discussion with it. AI can explain it to you, but not always understands what it's saying. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. I don't know, do we have more time? No? 
you know, if we have any more question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the question basically was uh, if the students are not learning but giving all the, let's say, homeworks or to the AI. Is it correct? Yeah, basically if students will stay motivated, I guess. Yeah, I can say, uh, have a one more word answer for it. Money. Uh, if you understand these technologies and you, you can look into the stack lower, it's always valued better in my opinion. So if somebody will just try to uh, go around the things, they will, they will struggle with finding jobs because AI already taken it over. But if you actually understand those technologies and you can utilize it better, we can supersede the AI in this always, at least for now. Okay, maybe say it in different words. Uh, like coding is just one part of the job. L like when I'm doing my work, coding is I know 10%, I still need to go to meetings, talk to people, write emails, like create diagrams and all these things. Yeah, maybe AI will do that in 10 years, everything, and I can just chill out in Malibu somewhere. But right now we still need these people to do all the work and just if just the coding is the AI can do, like yeah, it can help us, but it, it's not replacing us at all. Did that answer the question? Well, those students not passing, <laughs> so that's it, <laughs> who just cutting the corners and not doing the job. I saw one more question, yes. Yeah, so the comment was that the, um, the MIT University uh, created a course which is, uh, um, con consists of uh, missing, uh, missing uh, meta tools, yes, yeah. So, yeah, that's, I also think that's neat and uh, last comment. Yeah, that. so thank you for this comment. Actually, on this faculty where I studied before my PhD, there was a course called IVS, Practical Aspects uh, in Software Development, where they were teaching exactly <laughs> these things, Unix philosophy, Git, and all the uh, sugar around. Yeah, and I, and I think personally that such courses are very Yeah, I think we agree with you, and... Uh... <laughs> that made me apply to Red Hat. <laughs> And I think uh, we are out of time, but we are still here around a little bit longer. And uh, if we, you see us, please talk to us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>